Kubernetes is one of the most popular tools in cloud computing and is becoming more and more popular every day. All the projects are migrating to Kubernetes and it's already becoming the standard in most companies. As a result, of course, the need for IT professionals who know Kubernetes is higher than ever and is increasing every year. But the demand for Kubernetes professionals is way higher than the number of people who actually know Kubernetes. This means if you invest time in learning Kubernetes and getting certified as a Kubernetes administrator, you'll have an incredible advantage and a head start in your IT career. Now, Kubernetes is not the easiest tool to learn, set up and manage. So if you want to become a Kubernetes administrator, you will need to learn a bunch of stuff. I have taught hundreds of thousands of people Kubernetes through my videos. And now I have created this full course to teach you everything necessary to get started with Kubernetes from zero and become an expert in it. You will be prepared to handle any issues in the cluster. You will know exactly how Kubernetes works and be able to support teams in your company to use Kubernetes properly after completing this course. This course is mostly demo lab projects where you work hands on along with me to practically apply all the concepts you learn, but also understand the use cases of each concept and really know why and how to use it. And to make understanding the theoretical concepts easier, we have animated videos and real world examples to understand how it all applies in the real world projects. Now you also know how important it is to prove your knowledge in the IT world. And a certification is a great way to show your skills. And this course prepares you completely for the CKA exam so that you can become a certified Kubernetes administrator. So let's go through the course contents and see what you will learn from our Kubernetes administrator course. We will start with the main Kubernetes concepts and understand how Kubernetes architecture works, what Kubernetes resources are, learn about Kubernetes configuration files, and generally how to work with Kubernetes. We will then install a Kubernetes cluster from scratch on virtual machines. For that, we will use a Kube ADM tool and learn and understand all the concepts about control plane processes, how they work, how they get configured, and so on. You will also learn about container runtime interface in Kubernetes and how is it possible to use different container runtime technologies with Kubernetes. We will also look at a very interesting topic, which is networking in Kubernetes and container networking interface. We will learn about how pod networking works and how it is configured, as well as install a networking plugin to create a networking layer in our Kubernetes cluster. We will also learn how DNS works in Kubernetes and learn about core DNS, which is the DNS service in Kubernetes. We will also take a look at how certificates work in Kubernetes, what certificates get automatically created and how you as a Kubernetes administrator can manage that. In the same section, we will also learn about very important Kubernetes concepts like namespaces, how to work with kubectl, which is a Kubernetes command line tool. You will learn about kube config file and how to use that to connect to the cluster, as well as how to configure and modify that. And also using kube ADM tool, you will learn how to join any worker nodes to the cluster. Once you have installed and configured the cluster, of course, you want to start deploying your applications in it and make it accessible externally. So we will learn how to deploy applications inside the cluster using deployments and how to make them accessible with services. You will also learn about different types of services in Kubernetes, how to use each one and more importantly, how they compare to each other. One of the common ways of configuring external access to our applications running in Kubernetes is ingress. So you will learn what ingress controller is and how to create ingress resources to configure routing in a cluster. And since we will be installing the ingress controller application using Helm, you will also learn what Helm is, how it works and how to use it to easily install different applications in Kubernetes. 
Now, of course, you won't be the only one working with the cluster because developer teams and other people will also need access. But you can't just give everyone admin access to the cluster. So we will learn about the concept of users and permissions in Kubernetes. We will learn about RBAC or role based access control. We will also learn how client certificates work in Kubernetes and we'll create a client certificate for a new cluster user. Since DevOps is all about automation, you will have to automate processes like deploying applications from the CI CD pipeline to Kubernetes. For such integrations, you also need users and permissions. So we will learn how to create non human users for different tools that interact with Kubernetes. When working with Kubernetes, things will go wrong. So everyone using Kubernetes should learn how to properly debug and troubleshoot the cluster. So you will learn about different ways of troubleshooting and debugging in Kubernetes using temporary pods, kubectl formatting, and also how to debug and fix kubelet service issues, etc. A very common use case is running multiple containers in a Kubernetes pod. So you will learn about such use cases and how to implement that using init containers and multi container pods. When deploying databases or other stateful applications in Kubernetes, you need to take care of persisting the data. For that, we will learn about volumes, what different types of volumes are available for different use cases, and how to configure each one of them. We will also see how to create external configuration for our applications with config map and secret components. Now, when you have hundreds or thousands of pods running in your cluster, you want to make sure each pod has enough resources to run and also that one pod doesn't take up all the resources on the server. For that, we will learn how to configure resource requests and limits in pods. Next, we will learn about concepts of taints and tolerations as well as node selectors, node affinity and inter pod affinity in Kubernetes and what role they play in scheduling pods in the cluster. You will also learn how to configure health status checks for containers inside the pods using liveness and readiness probes. When deploying new application releases in a cluster, it's important to understand how the pods get upgraded to the new application version. So for that, we will learn about deployment strategies in Kubernetes, such as rolling updates and how all this works. One of the important tasks of the Kubernetes administrator is to prepare for any disaster scenarios and make it possible to easily recover cluster in such cases. For that, we will learn how to backup and restore ECD data and also learn the theoretic concepts behind. In many cases, you may need to automate your tasks with Kubernetes. And for that, it's important to learn how Kubernetes REST API works and how to use it to get information from the cluster as well as make changes to it. Another very common task for a Kubernetes administrator is making sure the cluster is always up to date using the latest Kubernetes version. So you will learn step by step how to upgrade Kubernetes cluster on control plane nodes as well as worker nodes. As a cluster admin, you will often have to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters. And for that, it's important to know the concept of contexts and how to use contexts to switch between clusters when administering them. As part of the Kubernetes administrator job, you will also learn how to check expiration of Kubernetes certificates and how to renew them. When configuring Kubernetes clusters, you will have to also take care of securing your cluster in different ways. One of the ways of securing the cluster is by restricting the communication between the applications within the cluster to minimize the attack surface. And for that, we will learn about the network policies and how to configure them in Kubernetes. And finally, if you want to take the CKA exam, I prepared some useful tips that will help you totally ace the exam. Now, equipped with all this knowledge, you will be prepared to pass the Kubernetes administrator exam, but more importantly, be able to actually set up and administer Kubernetes clusters in your projects. The course is accompanied with a Git repository, including all the relevant links, commands and examples 
I'm using in the demos so you can easily work along. I am super excited to teach you all this, so let's get started.